Yes. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm uh, Walter Koch. Thanks for sticking around. I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, what you just said. This doesn't work, the clicker. Um, yeah, that's not how it's supposed to look. I'll <laughs> I thought PDF was always like going to look the same no matter what you do, but uh, okay. Um, so, so I would like to say a few things about the Norwegian Biodiversity Information Center, not because my employer makes me talk about them or because I think you would care a lot about the organization I work for, but, but it kind of sets the stage of, of how we tackle this problem. Um, so our goal is to provide society with uh, knowledge uh, in, in a fair way. And we don't do research, we don't do management. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll just, just look at the, the kangaroos and, 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 uh, <laughs> and, and listen to me. Um, so there's, um, I've, I've, I've been worried, well, we as an organization, but, but I personally too have been worried for a couple of years now about the taxonomic impediment that we have. Um, because a lot of the products that we make are based on someone somewhere making an inference about what species they saw uh, or, or what's a, what a specimen is. Uh, and we're losing that kind of knowledge. We, we are losing taxonomists and we don't get to uh, spend our time on, on these things as uh, biologists. And meanwhile, we are depending more and more on uh, citizen scientists who uh, in a lot of cases do have this uh, kind of knowledge, but in other cases might need to learn more and may want to learn more. Um, so to do something with that, um, I've been working with identification keys for the past few years. Um, we launched in 2016, so these are digital identification keys. And the way we work, we, we, we don't have any scientists, so we, have, uh, we subsidize external experts to, to put their knowledge into a system. And we quickly found out that they're not willing to learn a scripting language, they're not willing to uh, spend a lot of time on, on some new tool. Um, so what we ended up using is kind of the common denominator for all biologists, which is uh, still Excel. Um, so we ended up use, making um, a CSV uh, format for them to use. This is kind of a, a stripped down version of that. So we would have characters and states uh, on the rows and, and the columns would be the species and they could tag one is zero, you can leave it empty, uh, kind of a standard uh, tabular format. You, you can have intermediate values of uh, 0.5 where a species can have that uh, uh, particular trait but doesn't necessarily have it in all cases. Um, so so some of the features of this uh, that we find particularly important and that we were missing in others uh, is, is exactly that kind of thing of, of saying that something has, sometimes has a particular trait. And we also use a lot of subtaxonomic entities. So we can have like, like uh, uh, sexes or morphs uh, can be uh, subdivided and they can be things, and that's up to the expert, if the user has to go on answering questions until they end up with a sp uh, specific morph or if that's just additional information that we can use to, to show the right picture, not to confuse the user, but as soon as they're at the species level, they don't have to go on. Uh, other than that, we have stuff like uh, dependencies, so, so uh, certain questions will only be asked if you have answered a, not, a different question in a particular way. We, we use that with uh, like a, a key we have in spiders, uh, where often the web is a very good, uh, uh, way to determine the species, but if you don't have the web, I mean, that's not a trait of the species, so you won't know until you ask the user, do you have the web in front of you? Uh, stuff like that. Uh, media, text and IDs, descriptions, uh, links to more information on all of these things uh, as part of it. There's also a, a bunch of stuff missing, very much like on the slides there, I think it goes on. <laughs> um, the, the main problem with these uh, tabular formats is that it, it is very flat. You have a list there and a list there and you match them. So you don't have a taxonomic hierarchy because that would take a lot of, of extra rows and columns and, and you don't 
want to represent the whole taxonomy of a species in there. Um, another thing we're missing is, is stuff like spatial context. You would like to be able to say where a species might occur, but you would also like to say, or we would like to be able to say that a species has a certain trait in a specific area, but not in other areas. Because um, Norway is a very long stretch country and you can have different traits uh, from north to south. Uh, multilingual keys are, are an important aspect. Uh, numerical values, uh, we want more metadata on all of these things, uh, et cetera. So I've been working um, uh, the past years on something called clavis, uh, uh, which, stands, which means key in Latin, but also stands for clavis, lightweight and versatile identification schema. I spent a lot of time on that acronym. Um, as you can tell, <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a JSON schema. So it's, it's a, a, a JSON file describing how to make other JSON files. Uh, and, and it's a joy to work with because it will integrate into your IDE and it will tell you if it's a correct uh, Clavis file or not. And it will autocomplete and all, all of that kind of stuff. This was part of my PhD that I finished last year on citizen science. Uh, and we published a paper on this uh, in PLOS One. Uh, Want to look it up? Uh, just just look for Clavis, and you'll find it. Um, and what I did is I, I took as a use case for that paper, I took Pokemon, because I was afraid if I was going to use some, like some beetle group as an example, it would get sent to a reviewer that knows a lot about beetles, and they would say, "Well, actually, this species is not what you think." And, and uh, that that's not the point. Uh, I, I do li I like taxonomists. That's not that, but it was just not the point of this paper. Um, Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me uh, use real Pokemon. Uh, I, I did contact, uh, did try to contact Pokemon Inc., but they wouldn't answer my emails. So I ended up collaborating with uh, um, with uh, generative AI and created my own Pokemon so that I could uh, have some examples. So they're they're totally uh, rights free. Uh, they're called Clavis and Clavicula and uh, Clavisima. Um, <laughs> So um, using this, I, I, uh, I, I presented those uh, on a poster last year at Tadwig, uh, I a proud winner of the Warm and Fuzzy Award. Um, since then, a lot has happened. We made a uh, online editor that let, because uh, the taxonomists that don't like to write scripting language, they don't like to write JSON either. So we need a, an editor in order to generate this kind of stuff. So on clavis.anno, you can find a, a, an open uh, generator for these kinds of files. And our focus has been to replicate all of the features that we have in our, our, in our uh, CSV file format. And we find that already experts greatly prefer this over CSV, which, which is great. Uh, it's all on, on GitHub and, and MIT license and uh, stuff like that. Um, so the way it works, you, you, you open the... the uh, the editor, and you start saying, well, this is my, the language for my key. You give it a name. Uh, you choose a license right away, very important. Uh, you give it a name, uh, make a creator, and then you can start ad adding taxa. And instead of having to look up, uh, as you ha would have to do in, this, uh, in our Excel file, look up the ID of, of the taxon, you can just look into uh, our database directly. You can import the whole t uh, taxonomy if you want. Uh, all of the sub taxa that we have in our taxonomy. And you can start adding pictures. You can add your own URL. You can use uh, an ID of a picture, or you can pick the pic uh, something that has already been tagged in our system with that uh, with that taxon. Uh, you can start add adding characters, so you can give eye colors, and you can give them uh, description. You can link to even more descriptive uh, articles, and you can add values to that. And then you can get going. You can, you can make your table. Uh, you can say, well, this is a, a species that uh, never has red eyes, but it may have blue eyes. Uh, it may have green eyes. So that whatever the user picks there, uh, if it chooses red, the species uh, will disappear from the list. Uh, if it chooses anyone else, anything else, it will stay on there. Um, this is not what it looks like, but um, this was supposed to be a picture of what it looked like. <laughs> um, but uh, this is kind of what it looks like in the mobile form. Um, so you you have these. Uh, uh, this is a particularly nice key with uh, an editor that that really good illustrations. But you can you, you choose your uh, you're presented with like 
a maximum of five questions at a time, which are relevant for the subset of taxa that you're still with. You, you pick these and one after one, well, uh, group after group taxa will disappear until you're left with one of them. Um, in the future, I my other uh, pet project is uh, image recognition. So I work a lot with AI and I think the combination of these two is really gonna be important because uh, I, I think the AI can provide a selection of the taxa that something may be based on the picture. Uh, and you can send that result to the key. It can pre-filter the taxa. Uh, so if, if it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's within this genus, you can go to the, the family key. You can filter all on that genus within all of the genera. And you can use the key for quality control. You can send users up one level if you want to double check your AI, stuff like that. And I think the educational value is going to be so much higher than just spitting out some answers and letting people choose from that. Um, so yeah, look, really looking forward on uh, working uh, more on this. Thanks. Nice. Thank you. Is there some question online? On the room? Nothing. One yep. Behind the pillar. Okay. I'm Oh, thank you. That was interesting. Um, do you see any opportunities to actually collaborate with the former talker to bring those two products together so you've both got a scripting and a JSON language and an output that really seems quite nice? Yeah, I, th I think the previous talk was uh, a lot of on, on species descriptions and, and natural language, which is kind of uh, the, the opposite, uh, the, well, the, the other end of the spectrum. But I think these are both interesting use cases, and I, I would like to be able to generate these kinds of things for that kind of language. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also with not just the one previous speaker, but several of the previous speakers, I think. Is there another question? No. Okay. Good. So, thank you.